Hey guys, uh, Krista here with Cowboy Lifestyle Network, and I'm super excited. Um, we are fully embracing the current situation, and I am excited to be interviewing NASCAR driver Spencer Boyd. So, Spencer, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, happy to be here from the comfort of my home, and looks like yours as well. Yes, I am working from home. Um, so, Spencer, tell us, tell our audience, first of all, a little bit about yourself. Um, I think there's a lot of NASCAR fans in our audience, but just in case anybody's not familiar, just kind of give us the rundown. Yeah, I'm Spencer Boyd. I, I race in the NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series, and I drive the Record Rack Deer Feed Chevy Silverado on most weekends. That's awesome. And Spencer, give us, you got to give us a little more than that. So where'd you grow up? How'd you get started in this? And how'd you yeah. get involved with Record Rack? Well, it'll take you, take you way back. Uh, I'm 24 now, but I started out racing in uh, the Midwest when I was five years old. So uh, much like other kids, uh, I played all the other sports, but I uh, loved dirt bikes, loved go-karts, and um, my mom was a big fan of go-karts. So uh, she let me race all over the country and chase that dream. And um, for me, growing up in the Midwest, outdoors were always a big part of my life. Um, racing was uh, something that was super important for uh, my family and I. and chasing that racing dream um so tensions got high you know uh throughout my childhood of uh you know what was important and, and traveling all over the country and something my dad and i did that was a little more laid back um was hunt so growing up in missouri we had a lot of big whitetail uh, so i was fortunate to uh knock down some big bucks at a young age and uh, a lot of people dream about bucks that size but uh, that was something my dad and i did to kind of get away from the normal you know work life and racing and and that sort of thing uh, that has really just followed along in my life. Uh, now at 24, uh, hunting is something that I still do to relax and do with my friends and, and my dad as well. Uh, but uh, I've been really blessed to uh, go do a lot of really cool hunts nowadays. And uh, with Record Rack, uh, it was something that we used uh, on a buddy's ranch out here um, that we fed to the deer. And... Uh, obviously it helps with the racks and things like that so that was when I first got introduced to Sportsman's Choice and Record Rack products and for me that's kind of how a lot of my partnerships work uh, it's something that I use in my daily life uh, something that I'm passionate about I really stand behind products it's got to be something that works mm -hmm. uh, I like made in America products and companies that support veterans so kind of did a little research myself on Record Rack and was like man we're really like-minded I think we could have a lot of fun together so um, reached out and just said, hey, what can we do together? Um, what initiatives do you have going on? And really the conversation was all about the, uh, the conversation was all about Bucks for the Brave and, yeah. and what they had going on. And um, I've been doing that for two, uh, two years now. Um, so, hopefully get to do the third. Yes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt really quick because that's super important. And I want to give that kind of its own like spotlight topic. I want to go cool. back because you kind of like, you blew through that really quick, and I want to make sure that our viewers get the whole story here. Um, uh -oh. so, yeah, I know, I know, but I want to go back. I mean, what's it like? Because I think that like kids and teenagers and like it's a cool thing to be like racing for NASCAR. Like, what was like your first race? Like, what were the feelings that you were feeling? Like, was it surreal? Was it? Were you like, is this really happening? Like, what? What? What was going on there? Like at the professional level? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you grow up racing and chasing those dreams, and you know, you race like all these racetracks in the middle of nowhere. They're like in the middle of cornfields growing up, and. You see what Dale Jr. and those guys race at. They're, like, in the city. They're huge sporting events, like, a lot like baseball and things like that, huge stadiums. So uh, my first experience was racing a go-kart at Charlotte Motor Speedway. That was my first, like, big NASCAR track that I got to drive through the tunnel. And that's when you start getting, like, butterflies, and you're like, whoa, this is the same tunnel that <laughs> Dale Jr. drives through. Like, it's super exciting. Um, so my first NASCAR race uh, – like as a professional, I was 20 years old, was at Martinsville Speedway. And I walked through the tunnel there and those excitement, that excitement was still there. Um, I was just amazed at how big it was, um, all the history. Like when you go through the tunnel, there's paintings on the walls and just 
previous winners and things like that. So um, that feeling I still get to this day, and I've ran 72 NASCAR races in uh, the last four years. So um, that excitement hasn't left, and I hope it never does. Cool. That's awesome. And, um, oh, my gosh. Oh, and I was going to totally ask you, what, like, what's been your proudest moment to date? Oh, <laughs> Well, for me, um, there's so many exciting parts of being a race car driver, um, so many cool things that I've got to do outside of racing, but as far as accomplishments and proud moments on the racetrack, uh, I achieved my first big win, uh, first big win for Young's Motorsports, which is the team I drive for, uh, at Talladega last year. So the last four months, um, being able to have that box check marked and, and say that I'm a NASCAR winner has been a big moment for myself and uh, the team as well. Awesome. Very cool. All right. So now I will fast forward. I appreciate the background. Um, so we met last November at the Bucks for the Brave event hosted by Record Rack and Trinity Oaks in Texas. Um, I, I kind of, because there were, there's so many emotions around that. I mean, it was such like an emotional couple of days, but um, and I'll kind of give a rundown to the audience on what that is. And we have a couple articles on it as well. You guys can go search it on the website. Um, but kind of in your own words, kind of describe what that weekend was like for you. Yeah. So I've been a part of two Bucks for the Brave events and, um, each one, uh, there's different things that stand out. Um, it's tough to say that it's just a fun experience because that's not what it's about. I mean, it's so much more than that. Um, just the experience from when you show up at Trinity Oaks and, uh, they talk about it all the time when you, you know, cross the river and you go into Trinity Oaks. Uh, it's huge. Um, it's just, there's no phone service. Like so many things that you feel that are important to your daily life and like, oh my gosh, I couldn't go without this or that. Uh, you realize I'm good. Like I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to do anything but hang out with these veterans and experience uh, what you're about to experience. And it's been different every time. Um, it's different veterans every time, so they don't do the same folks every year. Uh, but you get to go out there, emotions, like no one looks at you as your faults or what's going on, or uh, everyone's like on this level playing field. And that's what's so cool. Um, you get to dive in and look at wildlife, and that's amazing in itself. Like Texas is so thick with, with amazing animals and um, obviously, you know, chasing big whitetail. Um, that's what Record Rack is a lot about. But getting to see these veterans cut loose, um, go out there, harvest animals, usually the biggest animals that they've ever seen, uh, and myself included, uh, seeing whitetail like that does not happen in North Carolina. So it's a cool one-on-one -on -one experience. Um, for myself, I got to sit down with each veteran and kind of, you know, every night get to hear different stories and what they have going on, and um, they don't get recognized enough in the real world. So uh, they sacrifice so much. So to get to go out there to Trinity Oaks and experience these amazing wildlife, knock down huge whitetails, and just hang out with people that actually appreciate what they've done um, is an eye-opening experience. Um, you shed a lot of tears, and I'm not one that uh, likes to cry, so I kind of like hang out in the corner when it starts getting serious like that. But um, it's amazing to hear the stories and just um, what they've experienced through life and, and what the outdoors means to them. I mean, it means something to all of us, and usually it means something different. So getting to share those moments uh, is amazing. And, you know, I kind of want to add to that because I think what happens in that weekend, and it's not just like you kind of you kind of said that it's an even playing field. Um, and you come in, no expectations, like you don't. I, I didn't think I was going to know anybody there. Um, and really, I didn't. Like, I, I didn't know you. I didn't. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of books that I didn't know. But it's cool to see everybody else kind of cutting loose also. You know, um, we had um, Dakota Eldridge, uh, the steer wrestler. He was hanging out. I mean, just the same as you, kind of talking with these veterans. And I've, I've only ever seen him at the NFR. You know, I've never seen him in kind of like a down-home setting like that. Um, Heath DeMoss is another one. You know, there were so many people there. Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, this last year, we were able to have um, Mr. Donald Trump Jr. How cool was that? Yeah, it's it's wild. <laughs> like, 
And that's the thing, like Trinity is, you never know who you're going to meet. Um, the guy that's wearing blue jeans that you're sitting down eating dinner with, you have no idea like what their daily life is and, and the stresses that they go through. Uh, so yeah, speaking of that, like for me, I love the rodeo and these are names that I, you know, heard on TV or seen online. And next thing you know, they're like, yeah, you know, he's right over there. I'm like, what? Like, this is so cool. So, uh, I think everyone has that same feeling of, you know, wow, you know, this is crazy that we're all hanging out here and there's not much that matters except for good conversation and eating good food and just talking about life experiences. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, which kind of leads me to kind of your relationship with Record Rack. And you kind of touched on it that you like, you know, you want to stand behind your sponsors and the products that you support. But, and I know personally, but I mean, the relationship that with, that you have with Record Rack goes far beyond just a sponsorship. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, we live in a, a pretty corporate world. Uh, my world revolves around, you know, like OEM partners and just racing and things on TV. And um, it's tough. Like you try and make everyone important and uh, feel like they're getting what is important to them, you know, whether it's social media or at the track. And it's a lot different with Record Rack. And that's what's made the partnership so authentic and fun is how it started out as a product that I personally used. Um, felt that it was a superior product to others and then reached out and created this partnership. And then it fell into, you know, Bucks for the Brave and, and what they do and being able to be a part of that for two years. Um, you see everyone work on a different level. Um, you find out that it's not just a corporate partner. It's not just a corporate company. Like they have the heart. Everyone there um, has values and, and how they feel about veterans is how I felt about veterans my whole life. And coming from a family that there are a lot of, you know, veterans and active duty guys. My cousins uh, are still active in the military. So um, getting to stand behind them and what they do is special. Um, and then it led me into, hey, I love going to the rodeo. And uh, <laughs> Jody from Record Rack was like, if you like the rodeo, you're really going to like the rodeos we get to. And I'm like, all right, you know, like, show me, like, <laughs> what's it like? And they've allowed me to experience so many cool things and get behind the scenes and um, really become part of the Record Rack family. And I think taking it back to Trinity Oaks and Bucks for the Brave, everyone feels like they're in this whole different family now. Uh, I Facebook messaged Greg and a couple other guys that I met uh, this past season. And it's like, wow, you know, I didn't expect that the first time I went down there. And it, it's almost spooky. You're like, okay, like you see their Facebook post and you're liking and they're texting you and um, you really start to care about these guys and gals. And um, that's a cool family record rack has. And i um, really fortunate that they pulled me from the NASCAR side and, and let me be a part of it. Cool. And, you know, just a couple more things before we wrap up, but I do, and I mean, everybody kind of has their own kind of viewpoint on this, but how do you see the crossover between like record rack? There's like the whole wildlife side of it, but like you said, you kind of tied into the rodeo and then how does that tie into NASCAR? Like, how do you see that crossover? Yeah, for me, you know, I'm a big part of NASCAR. It's been my whole life. And um, there's so many things that mean a lot to me outside of racing. And when you look at NASCAR, if you look at record rack, and you look at the rodeo, what I see is um, Western lifestyle, uh, a great appreciation for the flag, America. Everyone stands for the national anthem. Um, it's just a lot of like-minded people. Uh, so I would say that's where uh, I feel the main connection is. But race fans love uh, Rex. They love crazy action sports. So when you look at the rodeo, I think those are the most most athletic guys. Like when I go there, I don't feel like an athlete. I don't feel like <laughs> Spencer Boyd, the NASCAR driver. I go there and I'm like, whoa, I'm just this fan. Um, I get to go do these cool things and see behind the scenes of like what the amount of effort these guys put into their craft and how dangerous it really is. I mean, um, I've got to see a lot of cool things for a 24 year old. And uh, I think the NFR and, and events like that, at that high level, uh, where you put an athlete on an uncontrollable animal, I mean, it's just wild. Now, I'm going to include this in the interview because I found it absolutely hilarious. Um, but I know, because I was there, you had the opportunity to ride um, 
some pretty cool horses at the NFR. <laughs> yeah, that was a really cool experience. Um, those guys were, were awesome. Um, it was a lot of fun. I've rode horses before, but I've never okay. rode famous horses. <laughs> and uh, you were there, so I you could tell I was nervous. And these aren't like horses. These are um, horses. Yeah. Okay. And um, I feel like uh, they know they're famous. Like yeah. they have this attitude. And uh, <laughs> I felt like I was in control for just a few moments. And then I was like, this horse is like showing me up and telling me who's <laughs> boss. Um, yeah. And you're like, you look around and it's like, oh, hey, there's Stratosphere. Like you're in downtown yeah, Vegas on the strip. Uh, it's just so cool how you guys flip Vegas into the rodeo. And I was like, when I went there for the NASCAR race here recently, I was like, where's the cowboy hats? Like, <laughs> this is not Vegas. Like, yeah. um, so you guys go in there and you flip it upside down and um, it's really cool. There's horses going up and down the strip and uh, it smells like manure and um, it's just a cool experience where uh, it's a lot different than a normal Vegas. Yeah. And then just recently too, you were at the American in Arlington. Um, how is that? How would you compare that to, and like, obviously these are, some very top caliber rodeos. These are not like your hometown Bodunk rodeos. Um, but how yeah. would you compare the American to the NFR? Uh, wow. It's, uh, <laughs> it's huge. Uh, the American's really big. A lot of excitement packed in a small area, um, which made it a lot of fun. A um, lot less corporate stuff going on, more mm -hmm. of just like honoring the best in the world. And they say that so much. Like, mm -hmm. every time you're like, oh, that's the best in the world. Like, that's mm -hmm. top ten in the world. And you're like, okay, wait a minute. Like, this is not the rodeo that you go to in your backyard. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of excitement. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the American. Um, I felt like I got some more, you know, like, high visibility and, like, experiences. Uh, I got yeah. behind the scenes. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Behind the scenes was uh, was really cool. I mean, when you see the bull – and the snot's coming out, and someone's hitting you in the face, you're like, okay, like, uh, it doesn't get any cooler <laughs> than this. Like, this is as real as it gets. Yeah. Um, but these guys, uh, they're larger than life, a lot of fans, a um, lot going on, and just the patriotism is what really struck me. Like, I was trying to video all these different moments, and all my fans on the NASCAR side are, like, messaging me on Instagram. They're like, what is this? Where mm -hmm. is this? What's going on? And myself, uh, I like retro, things like that, so the stockyards were uh, were a lot oh, yeah. of fun. Awesome. And, you know, I think that that's really cool because talking about that crossover again, I think that it's important to educate people that there is a crossover and you can like rodeo and like NASCAR and they kind of fall in the same bucket. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you have, like, your diehard rodeo fans and diehard NASCAR fans, but if you go sit them at a table at dinner, they're like, Oh yeah, rodeo's cool. Oh yeah, NASCAR's cool. Like, there's a lot of uh, relatable parts to both. Yeah. And um, I think if you're a NASCAR fan, you definitely should go check out the rodeo if you haven't already. And I think rodeo fans uh, could find enjoyment in NASCAR. And there's definitely a crossover. Uh, myself, uh, I feel like I have a foot in both worlds, and yeah. uh, I feel really fortunate to get to do that and see things and be behind the scenes. Um, but really. Like, I just, like, envy those guys. I think uh, think they're larger than life, and uh, it's a lot of fun to watch. And um, nowadays, with, like, social media and what's going on, um, myself being out in North Carolina and rodeo, we don't have huge rodeos here. Uh, so to be able to consume that on social media, and, you know, I was at the race the other day, uh, right before this whole corona deal happened, and I'm sitting there, like, checking social media and following uh, Dakota and everyone, and I'm like, how did this become so important to me? Yeah. Um, but it happens pretty quick. That's awesome. Um, and just in case, I'm sure there's a lot of followers out there right now that are watching this. How can they follow you on social media? You know, what? where can they contact you? Yeah, follow me on Twitter at Spencer Boyd and on Instagram at Spencer Boyd PR. Um, I'm on there all the time and I run it myself, uh, much like those radio guys. So uh, check me out. Cool. And Spencer, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I think you're kind of laying low your season. Was it postponed? Yeah, we are on hold until the middle of May. So oh, um, man. not a whole lot of cool stuff going on here in the <laughs> Carolinas. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, go follow him on Instagram and Twitter. 
Um, again, Spencer, thank you so much for being with us today. And I can't wait to catch up soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Cool. Thank you.